Hey Hunters, Lord here. With the demo playing of Gamescom's beta of Monster Hunter Wilds officially over, I've already covered a ton of new and returning features in Monster Hunter Wilds. But what I haven't really been able to cover is what we know about the weapons and their movesets. I've talked at a surface level about our knowledge of some new moves, but I really wanted to go ahead and take a deep dive into each weapon, going over what moves are new, what moves are back, and some changes to returning moves. With that said, let's go ahead and get straight into it. So some of the people who attended Gamescom to play the demo for Wilds received a link to a controls page for each weapon in Monster Hunter Wilds, allowing hunters to get a small idea of what to do once they got their hands on the demo build. I was able to get access to an English copy of this sheet, which I will link down below in the description and the pinned comment. So I'm not just going to be going through and reading the exact moves, I'm also going to point out extra things that I've noticed, as well as adding in little notes based on tens of hours of footage that I've seen from the Gamescom build, and I also have information from friends who actually went to Gamescom and played, some stuff that I found on Twitter from people who went to Gamescom, as well as information from people who Capcom brought out to privately play a version of the demo build. So there's a lot more information here than just what you'll see on the screen. For brief reference, I don't want to talk about one specific console like it shows here, so I'm going to be using things like face buttons or triggers. So here's a little overview of the two main console controllers and what each button I will say is. So up first is the general on-screen info or the HUD. This includes your health, stamina, and sharpness meters, the button guide, your party's health information, the minimap, and some of the pop-up alerts. Some extra information that we know about the main HUD is that the health bar is much more dynamic and flowing. This is likely due to the changing weather conditions in the maps here in Monster Hunter Wilds. They needed something that would stand out and be obvious to the hunter, whether you're hunting in bright sunshine or in a desolate sandstorm. While this has actually been a source of some controversy in the community, for whatever reason, many people who played the demo build said it's hardly even noticeable and you'll have no issue getting used to it. The sharpness gauge is also much more dynamic than in some of the previous titles, with this little gold bar showing up where the next sharpness level will start. For this example photo, the gold bar is where you would drop from green sharpness down to yellow sharpness. The button prompts will show you what any given button will do if you press it at the current time, whether that's in combat, out of combat, if you're just starting a combo, if you're mid combo, etc. And when you actually press a button, the move you inputted will be shown just to the left of it, here. This way you can not only learn the inputs, but you'll also be able to see the names of the attacks that you just put in so you know what you're doing a little bit more easily. The map is going to be fully three-dimensional and can be expanded by simply tapping the touchpad, allowing you to view the full map while still controlling your hunter or sacred, or you can hold down the touchpad to bring up a fully interactive three-dimensional map. The next snippet is on item usage. This remains very similar to the previous Monster Hunter games. Holding your left shoulder button will allow you to use the right and left face buttons to scroll across your item bar. The radio menu is returning here in Wilds, and you can swap between four different radio menus using the directional pad while you're holding your left shoulder button. With each radio menu will have a different amount of consumables or communication features. One thing to notice is that on the right side of this example radial menu is a new option called Optimal Healing. This will choose the best item to heal the amount of health that your hunter is missing. For example, if you select this option and you need a large amount of health back, say you're on your last legs with like 1 HP, it will have your hunter consume a max potion. You'll still go through the animation of consuming it, but it will select it for you. If you're only missing a small amount of health, you would consume like a regular potion. This is done without having to scroll to that exact item, but your hunter will still go through the animation of using said item. The basic controls while you're either mounted on your sacred or while you have your weapon sheathed remain largely unchanged from previous titles. However, you can now choose to shoot slinger ammo or to use your hook slinger. And you can call your sacred using the directional buttons. Up on the D-pad will have you mount your sacred and it will automatically follow the scout flies to your destination or monster of choice allowing you to heal or sharpen or check the map, etc. while mounted. You could also use down on the d-pad to maintain manual control of your sacred. 
The controls for your weapon being unsheathed also relatively remain the same and will of course change with your weapon. They also have the addition of focus mode. There's not a ton to delve into here either, so let's go ahead and move on to focus mode. It's given a little bit more flesh here, but if you're watching this video, I'm just going to go ahead and assume that you already understand at least this much about the new focus mode mechanic. So I'll go ahead and move on. Feel free to pause if you want to read up on focus mode a little more in depth. We are of course going to start off with the great sword. We get a look at some very familiar moves. Our regular attacks, charged attacks, the tackle, the kick, and guarding all return. These are relatively unchanged. However, you do have a lot more ability to re-aim your attacks after you start them. I did see a clip earlier of a great sword user being able to do a full 180 degree turn during a true charge slash to hit a monster that had moved behind him. We also know that the jumping aerial attacks can have their direction changed in mid-air by moving the left stick to aim as you release your attack button. One of the new moves here in Wilds is the offset slash. This is a version of the rising slash that can be charged up, and if you connect this attack right when a monster attacks you, you can send the monster reeling and pull yourself towards it to land a brand new move. Also, perfectly guarding certain attacks with the greatsword allows you to go into a power clash, where you can then button mash while holding the monster at bay to get a flinch and some extra damage. This is the case with all weapons that can guard, they will all have the option to get a power clash. It looks really badass and I can't wait to offset some monsters. Next up is of course the longsword. This weapon has definitely gotten some love here in Monster Hunter Wilds. You'll see a relatively unchanged list of standard combos here at the top, as well as the return of Foresight Slash and Special Sheath down here in the bottom right. We also know that when in Red Gauge, your basic standard grounded combos will change to a new set of combos known as the Crimson Slashes. These replace your normal attacks with new, flashier moves that are, again, exclusive to the Red Spirit Gauge. The Crimson Slash combo is meant to be a balancing change to give Longsword users a reason to stay in the Red Gauge rather than just getting to Red Gauge and immediately unleashing a Helmbreaker. There's also a new action you can get by holding down the right trigger button. This is called the Spirit Charge. This holds the Longsword out in a sort of stance, charging it up, which allows you to gain Spirit Gauge. Upon charging and releasing the right trigger, you will perform a Spirit Round Slash that levels up your gauge accordingly. We also know that the new focus strike will level up your gauge, and you can actually gain multiple levels. For example, you could go straight from white gauge up to red without ever going to yellow. This depends on how many wounds the focus strike destroys. Another new move called the Spirit Release Slash can be performed by pressing your right trigger after landing a Helmbreaker. This also will consume a spirit level, so if you're in red gauge and do a Helmbreaker, you'll drop to yellow, and if you then do the Spirit Release Slash, you'll drop to White Gauge. Helmbreaker also can now be cancelled and rolled out of, while in mid-air, allowing you to maintain your current Spirit level, but the attack will not land or do any damage. Longsword users are definitely eating good, and expect to see a lot of this weapon in Monster Hunter Wilds. The classic weapon that is the Sword and Shield is next up on our list. Many of the combos you'll know well from Rise and World are returning, but some small changes have been made to the distance covered and total animation commitment, but they're still relatively the same combo moves. Shield bashes are of course still in wilds, you'll just need to also input the left analog stick when pressing the right face button. Using weapons while the sword and shield is not sheathed is still available, you just have to press the right trigger in tandem with the left face button to perform these actions. Perfect Rush is obviously still in the game, as is guarding into a backstep move. You can link the backstep into either the Perfect Rush or into the Scaling Slash, which can then either do a Falling Bash or Plunging Thrust. From the sources I've been able to gather, Perfect Rush is much more like its Rise iteration, where it cannot be cancelled into a Round Slash. However, the Perfect Rush finisher is the multi-hitting Falling Bash from Iceborne, not the single-hit version from Monster Hunter Rise. We have a new move called the Charged Chop, which is performed by holding the buttons, which are usually tapped for the Advancing Slash, the top and right face buttons, and this allows you to perform a sort of leaping attack. This attack hits a wounded spot, you'll land multiple hits of damage. During any ground attack, you can cancel directly into a guard by pressing or holding the right trigger, and SNS also has a perfect guard. If you perform the perfect guard, your hunter and shield will flash white, 
and you can combo that into a new counter slash by pressing the top face button. You can also combo this perfect guard into the charge chop using the same inputs noted here, or any other attack like a lateral slash using the right face button, a shield attack with the right face button and the left stick, or even a back step. Do note that if you fail the perfect guard, you will just do a normal guard, and you can only input the top or right face buttons. You cannot do the counter slash, charge chop, or the back step from a normal guard. If you're looking for more information or weapon specific breakdowns from people who've actually played the game, like you want to just see sword and shield gameplay or you just want to see Gunlands gameplay, I'll be sure to leave links to anything that I've found or can find in the description. Moving quickly on to dual blades, many of the base attacks return as seen here. Demon mode, which can be entered by pressing the right trigger, did however receive some new changes. First of all, if you perfectly evade an attack, you'll get a perfect evade, duh which will give you a short timed attack boost. Of course, this can only be done in demon mode. Demon mode still consumes stamina over time, and you can get out of demon mode by either manually pressing the right trigger again, or when you run out of stamina. The blade dance now has up to three separate inputs, allowing you to chain it along for much more damage, especially when the monster is knocked down. Now landing attacks in demon mode will help build up the arch demon gauge, which once it's full, you can enter arch demon mode. This gives you access to new attacks when you're not in demon mode and doesn't cause your stamina to continuously drain. Arch Demon Mode's flurry attack also now has up to two inputs that you can chain together, further bolstering Dual Blade's kit. Arch Demon Mode's gauge does deplete over time, and some attacks will use up chunks of the gauge too. The Focus Strike can cause you to Beyblade down the monster, which is super cool. I did notice that you can still perform the slide into Beyblade when you're sliding down a slope and I'm unsure if jumping off of a ledge can be chained into a Beyblade attack, as I wasn't really able to find any good Dual Blades footage that was fleshed out to its full potential. Up next is Ryozo's Baby Boy, the Hammer. It's definitely looking really good in Wilds. The standard Golf Swing combo is back, as well as your Big Bang combo. The final upswing of the Golf Swing combo can actually be used as an offset attack, so again an offset attack, if you land it right as a monster attack hits you, it can send the monster reeling backwards. The power-up that we had by pressing the right face button while holding charge seems to be gone. Instead, it is replaced by a new move called the Mighty Charge. When you've fully maxed out your hammer charge by holding the right trigger, while holding the right trigger you can press the top and right face buttons to go into the Mighty Charge where you swing your hammer around in little circles in front of you. These rotational swings didn't seem to actually be able to damage the monster, but you can either release the right trigger immediately for a nice little upswing attack, or you can fully charge the Mighty Charge to perform something called the Mighty Charge Slam. Also, while you're holding the right trigger to charge the hammer, you can actually use the right face button to use your hook slinger to pull you along in what's called a charged step. This allows you for some extra mobility and maintains your charge level. Riozo played only hammer during the developer livestream, so be sure to check those out for some top tier hammering. Hunting Horn is going to be seeing a lot more playtime in Wilds due to one specific feature. The buffs from Hunting Horn persist even if you switch weapons while on your sacred. That's right, so even if you're not a Hunting Horn main, you can definitely bring one along, buff yourself, then swap to your main weapon while still maintaining all of those Hunting Horn songs and buffs for their full duration. Now, it's not just going to be a support weapon or a self-buffing weapon, Hunting Horn still looks like it will be an incredibly fun weapon to use for combat, but this change will likely see Hunting Horn get used from people who may not have even picked up the weapon otherwise. Your basic Hunting Horn attacks are all back with your face buttons, with the more World and Iceborne style of melodies as opposed to the Rise and Sunbreak setup. Echo Bubbles are back but are somewhat different to the previous games. The bubble has a larger effect than it did in World, and just going through it will activate the effect for your hunter. They also resonate when you perform, so using the right trigger after queuing up a song, dealing damage to monsters that are inside the bubble. Again, song lists and performances play much more like the world iteration of Hunting Horn, which I know is a big fan favorite. Again, right trigger is used to perform songs that you have queued up, this can then be chained into the performance beat, again with the right trigger, which can then chain into an encore using the top and right face buttons. Now I'm not sure how long these combo animations will take, but this could definitely be a really strong option to use during monster knockdowns. You can also press the right trigger, top, and right face buttons at the same time when you have a song queued up 
to do a special performance. The Overhead Smash, one of Hunting Horn's highest damaging moves, also now has a new follow-up attack using the exact same inputs as your regular Overhead Smash. Now of course, as a follow-up attack, it can only be performed after you do a regular Overhead Smash and it looks super strong. I know many people are worried that Hunting Horn is going to be reduced to just a support weapon or something that you need to carry to buff yourself, but I actually think that this is a decent feature and it will get people to try out Hunting Horn who would have never tried it before. The unkillable tank that is the Lance is looking absolutely mint in Wilds. Many of its regular combos are returning as well as some incredible new features. The mid and high thrusts are back as well as a brand new triple thrust that can turn the 3 hit mid thrust combo into a 6 hit combo. Wide sweep, guard dash, guard dash follow ups, dash attack, dash steps and turns as well as the dash finishers are returning as well. After any 3 hit combo you can power guard to then go into another 3 hit combo and after any guard you can press the top face button for a return thrust or the right face button for a payback thrust. You can also use the right trigger plus the right face button to go again into power guard stance which will consume your stamina quickly but significantly lessens the impact of hits. There are also some shield bash attacks very similar to those from sword and shield but I currently haven't found a way on how to perform them. Lance attacks also seem to cover much more ground than in previous games, so positioning will both be easier and harder at the same time as you'll be able to move more but it'll be more than most Lance mains are used to, so I think there's going to be a little bit of a learning curve here. Now Gun Lance is looking absolutely obscene in Wilds. Now I tend to play every weapon in every Monster Hunter game that I can, and usually Gun Lance is like middle bottom in terms of total hunts for me, but I'm seriously considering running this alongside my trusty charge blade in Wilds. Shelling levels and shelling using sharpness seem to be, for the most part, a thing of the past. Charge shelling now uses up multiple shells at once depending on how long you charge the shelling for, you can move and shell at the same time, and shelling level again seems to be no more in favor of just shelling types, which leads me into our next point. One of the most surprising changes is that those who played the game at Gamescom and used Gun Lance have pretty good reason to believe that shelling scales with attack now, instead of being a fixed value that can only be boosted by things like artillery and food skills. Now this is technically unconfirmed by the developers, but is highly likely based on many playtesters' experiences. Other than that, most moves remain in the Gun Lance kit, but again, like I said, you can move in any direction while shelling, and there are a couple new burst attacks. Wyvern Fire now has two gauges that are recharged, allowing you to go back to back. These are recharged not just over time, but also by landing successful hits on the monster. The Worm Stake Cannon could be used at the end of combos, but some of those new burst moves will actually automatically use a Worm Stake at the end as well. Wyvern Fire, again, is back, it's super strong but it also has a quicker animation time when chained at the end of certain combos. The two ways that I know of how to get this quicker Wyvern Fire is either right after a Worm Stake or doing two Wyvern Fires back to back. Now of course, like I said, with all blocking weapons, Gun Lance having a shield, it will also have a Power Clash that can be activated by perfectly guarding certain monster attacks, and winning the Power Clash will always recharge one full Wyvern Fire gauge. I have also heard reports that if you try to do a shelling attack without having any shells loaded, you will instantly perform a quick reload. This will allow you to do a quick reload without having to do any prior attack inputs. Seriously though, Gunlance is shaping up to be a serious force in wilds and I will absolutely be trying it out. Up next is the Switch Axe where a lot of moves from World and Rise are back, but with some changes that might catch you a little bit off guard. The general axe play is very similar to the previous games with things like Wild Swings, Heavy Slam, Overhead Slash, and the Fade Slash returning. However, the top and right face button attack, which used to just be a normal upward swing, has a new mechanic to it. If you land this during a monster attack, it becomes an offset attack, which can then be comboed into either a Heavy Axe Slam or into a Morph Slash, depending on the inputs that you choose. This is basically the Switch Axe version of a parry for Monster Hunter Wilds. The Sword Gauge and Amped Mode work the same way as in World and Rise, and the Power Axe buff is returning as well. While in Axe Mode or during any Axe Mode combo, you can press your right trigger to perform a Morph or Morph attack to go into Sword Mode. 
While you are in sword mode, the regular gauge building combos are the same as in the last two main titles. There is also a counter in sword mode called the counter rising slash where you'll use your right trigger and top face button and if you successfully counter an attack you can then press your right face button to go into a heavenward flurry. However, the element discharge and the zero sum discharge now share the exact same input. Even if your sword is amped up, just connecting with the element discharge will not automatically latch you onto the monster to perform a ZSD like it did in previous games. Instead, when your sword is in the amp state, you will need to hold down the top and right face buttons to use the ZSD, which is very different from the last two games. You can also hold the right trigger and the top and right face buttons to perform a compressed slash, and if you're in the amp state, that same button combination will perform a full release slash. You can also perform the full release slash by doing an element discharge and then pressing the right trigger. Now for my personal favorite weapon, the Chad Blade. In sword mode, many returning attacks are still here, but we also can see that there is a perfect guard mechanic, just like every other shielded weapon, that can chain directly into a Savage Axe Slash. Savage Axe definitely works differently in Wilds than it did in World, and it slightly functions more like Monster Hunter Rise's iteration, where you have to hold down your attack button of choice in order to see the multiple hits, but there will be more on that when we talk about the Power Axe mode. Charging Files is of course still done in sword mode, and you can charge your shield and sword the same way as in previous games. It also looks like 6 files might be the standard, which would remove the need for something like magazine capacity, but again that is unconfirmed, I'm just looking at the pictures here. While in sword mode, if you press the right trigger and top face button, you can transform into axe mode. In axe mode, the combinations have gotten longer, but the general attacks are still the same. One big change in Axe Mode is that you cannot go straight into your super amped element discharge while just standing in Axe Mode. It is actually a follow-up attack to other Axe attacks. For example, with this combo we can see that you can do an amped element discharge into an AED follow-up, which you can then press an input to cancel into the super amped element discharge. My guess is that this is to keep the SAED spam Unga Bunga playstyle from becoming too OP in Monster Hunter Wilds, and I think it'll definitely make Charge Blade feel very different to its previous iterations. However, I'll need a chance to play it before I cast any judgment. Now, upon landing a successful Focus Strike, you will be put into a new mode called Power Axe Mode. This allows files to be used multiple times instead of a single file hit consuming an entire file. This also goes back to the Savage Axe feature that I spoke about where holding down your attack button will allow your attacks to hit multiple times pizza cutter style. I've had many friends who have tried this out at Gamescom. They said that Charge Blade is a lot to get used to, but feels really good once you get it down. Charge Blade is still definitely going to be my weapon of choice for my first playthrough regardless of any changes that they make. Now Insect Glaive mains, my pole dancing hombres, this is your time. You can actually now charge up your Kinsect, allowing it to gather multiple extracts in just a single hit. All you have to do is hold down the Kinsect Harvest button for longer to charge it, and then just recall your Kinsect the same as you did in World. You can still mark the monster on a specific area to have your Kinsect automatically attack it, just like you did in World and Rise, with either a right trigger attack or while using a Kinsect Fire Mark attack using the right trigger and shoulder buttons. Insect Glaive is actually getting a huge buff while attacking in focus mode as your regular attacks in focus mode will have your Kinsect also attack alongside you, gathering extracts at the same time. All three extracts and their usual buffs return, including the triple buff, as well as of course the green extract that you can get to heal. Now vaulting and aerial attacks are still around, although I'm hearing reports that the helicopter attack no longer keeps you airborne, even if the final attack still hits the monster. I've also heard murmurings in my comment section that someone got it to work, but the general consensus is one of confusion as to whether or not the infinite aerial glaive is back. You can now charge your right face button attack if you have red gauge, and if you have all three extracts you can follow that up with the left trigger and the right face button at the same time to perform a new attack called the rising spiral slash. This crazy looking attack will use up all three extracts instantly, dealing huge damage, but if you do land the attack successfully, your Kinsect will automatically regain all three extracts for you. Conversely though, if you miss this attack, you will be left with no extracts, 
so you're going to have to use this one wisely. The pole dancer move is confirmed to be a mount finisher as well, so my insect glaive friends keep flying high and being our mount getting machines. Light bow gun has been set up to be a bit more close range agile weapon with its ideal range, so the range where it does the most damage, was shortened and made closer to the monster to help differentiate it from heavy bow gun which had its ideal ranged move back a bit. This means that, in general, the light bow gun will have to play a little bit closer to the monsters than usual, but since it has the superior movement speed, I don't think that will be a very big issue. Aiming is the same button as focus mode, the left trigger as per usual, and again firing is done with the right trigger. A new chaser shot is introduced to the light bow gun in wilds, which hits harder than your normal rapid fire attacks, but also charges up your rapid fire gauge even quicker. You can press the right face button while not aiming to change into the rapid fire energy mode, which fires some types of ammos much quicker. Now one thing to note is that not all ammos can be used in this rapid fire energy state, and equipping it will automatically swap you to the nearest ammo on your scroll wheel that you have that can be used in rapid fire energy mode. The rapid chaser shot can also be used during the rapid fire energy mode, and what it does is it will give your rapid fire burst one extra bullet when used. So if you have two in a regular burst, it'll go to three, or if you have three, it'll go to four. You get the idea. You can add one to a number. I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm over explaining that. Another new feature that comes with Lightbow Gun's rapid fire is the burst step. By using the left analog stick and your dodge button, you can move in a dodging manner while still rapid firing your ammo. Anyway, the top and right face buttons pressed together will put down your wyvern blast. These are gradually restored over time. You can change ammos by again holding your left shoulder button, then you scroll up and down using the top or bottom face buttons, kind of like you're scrolling through your inventory, but vertically instead of horizontally. LBG also now has innate infinite ammos, with each bowgun having its own set of infinite ammos. The LBG in the Gamescom demo had infinite normal 2s, infinite spread 1s, and infinite pierce 1. I have used bowguns extensively in the last two main titles, and so I'm super excited to run with them again for wilds. Heavy Bowgun, like I mentioned earlier, has had its ideal range where the ammos do the most damage move back a bit, so you've got to be a little further from the monster than you're probably used to. Again, this is due to its higher attack power and its lower movement speed. I think what they're trying to do here is distinguish the roles between Light Bowgun and Heavy Bowgun, making Light Bowgun the aggressive close ranger and the Heavy Bowgun the more long range sniper. As some people have said that these two weapons were kind of blending together and filling a very similar niche in the last two games. All heavy bowguns seem to come stock with a shield built in, meaning that a mod slot to get a shield is no longer needed. Again, just like every weapon with a shield, it will have a power clash, but it does work a bit differently than heavy bowgun shields in the past. There is an automatic guarding feature, so as long as you're not attacking or rolling, by just simply facing the monster you will block an attack. However, you can also now manually guard, as you can see here, allowing you to get perfect guards and allowing power clashes to occur. Again, it's the left trigger to aim, right trigger to shoot, same way to scroll through your ammos as light bowgun, and you can press the right face button, again when not aiming down sights, to swap to your new mode called ignition mode. Ignition mode comes in two varieties, with each bowgun having one or the other. The two variations are either the Wyvern Heart Ignition, which is a high recoil, fully automatic machine gun mode, where your damage slowly gets higher the more consecutive hits you land on the monster without missing, or your bowguns will have the Wyvern Counter Ignition. This has you hold down the top face button, the longer you hold it, the more it charges up, and then you can release that same button to shoot out a massive Wyvern Counter. A wyvern counter can be used as an offset attack to send monsters reeling if you time it correctly. Now I am a little sad to not see Tackle return to Heavy Bogan's arsenal, but given the auto guarding and the other capabilities that it's gaining here in Wilds, I'm not surprised that it didn't carry over from Rise. Now last but certainly not least, we have the bow. Of course, Bo's general dash dancing returns in wilds, you'll be using the left trigger to aim, the right trigger to charge, and the bottom face button to dash. Now quick shots from world are back, there will be no more arrow slicing attack like there was in Rise, which I think is a good change. Bo also no longer has the jumping melee attack that builds up mount. Instead, dashing then pressing the top face button has a new look, which is called the flying swallow shot. 
where your hunter will leap into the air and fire off a shotgun spread of about five arrows wherever you're aiming. Also new to bow is that coatings are no longer limited and craftable, they are now tied to your new gauge called the Trick Arrow Gauge. Applying coatings will use up a chunk of that gauge, and you basically have to reload your coatings, sort of like a bowgun ammo, every time you run out of the amount per application. As you can see here, you get eight power coatings, so after you use eight, you'll have to reapply. The new feature for bow, the tracer arrow, which is readied by pressing the left face button while holding down the charge, also consumes your trick arrow gauge. The tracer arrow causes every single bow arrow attack to home in on the tracer, so you basically can't miss. This will be really good for targeting specific parts. This does not last forever, of course. The tracer arrow will explode once you've met the damage threshold. The arc shot, which is now performed by pressing both the right and left trigger and the right face button, now launches a raining hail of arrows that drop down onto the monster, and they can be exploded if they're hit by the focus strike or the thousand dragons. So these come down and stick in the monster and stay until you blow them up. So the arc shot arrows that stick in the monster, as well as wounded parts, can be targeted by the bow's focus strike. This allows for massive damage on the focus strike, even if you're low on wounded parts, you can just drop an arc shot and get more parts to target. Dragon Piercer is back and can be done from a standstill with the top and right face buttons. However, there is also a quickened version that has a lower animation commitment that can be done as any part of a combo, again with the same buttons. All you have to do is perform the Dragon Piercer after any other shot in a combo. Finally, Thousand Dragons returns, and it is no longer tied to slinger ammo, it's just big old arrows, and these can be impacted by your equipped coating. Thousand Dragons can be done at any time while holding your charge by also pressing the top and right face buttons. Now, I did notice that on Thousand Dragons, the aim point wasn't always where the arrows would actually hit, so I think that using Thousand Dragons in tandem with the Tracer Shot seems to be an extremely powerful tool in Bow's kit here in Wilds. Alright guys, that was a lot. That is pretty much everything I could get together about the new and returning weapon moves in Monster Hunter Wilds. If you know of more, I'm sure I missed some, so go ahead and help me out and leave a comment down below. Again, if you're looking for links of people who have actually played specific weapons talking about specific weapons, I'll leave links down in the description, so definitely check them out. If you did enjoy today's video or if you found it helpful, then do consider dropping a like as it's a totally free way to support me and my channel, and it tells YouTube that this video should be recommended to other hunters. If you're new to my channel, new to Monster Hunter, or if you're just craving more Monster Hunter Wilds content, then you should absolutely subscribe. This channel is going to be the best place to find news, guides, sets, tutorials, and much, much more for Monster Hunter Wilds, and subscribing is a surefire way to never miss an upload. Be sure to follow me over on Twitter or X, I'm retweeting Monster Hunter content all the time, and if you're interested in supporting the channel financially, there are a couple ways to do that down in the description. With all that being said, I want to thank you guys so much for watching this ridiculously long video. I wish you all a good day, and happy hunting.